Today's video lesson about simple harmonic motion has an emphasis placed on mass spring systems. When looking at mass spring systems, right, there's two different ways that we can describe this. First is with Hooke's law, and then the second is with our relationship that we see in a mass spring system to the period of oscillation that the system undergoes. So for Hooke's law, right, Hooke's law deals with the force that it takes to get that spring to get back to its equilibrium position. Because for, for your mass spring system and for any simple harmonic oscillator, right, it's all about that equilibrium position. So what Hooke's law allows us to do, right, is see what the restoring force is from the spring and how that relates to the spring constant and the overall displacement that we see from the spring itself away from equilibrium. Right, remember that X, that displacement, is how far that is going to move. So really, you could almost see X as the amplitude here, right? So you take your equilibrium for that spring, you stretch it so far, that's your displacement. Or you compress it, right? You shrink that thing down, right? And as you compress it, right, we're going to get that force acting in a different direction. And that's what that negative tells us. Again, that, that K, our spring constant, cannot be negative. Rather, that negative indicates that the displacement and the restoring force have to be in opposite directions. All right, so if you stretch that spring and you get X is positive, well then, by definition, the restoring force would have to be negative and pulling inward. If you were to define stretching it as a negative displacement, then the restoring force F pointed inward would be positive. Basically, you have to choose. What are you considering positive, right? And that's going to be your displacement. Your force is going to be the opposite direction of that. Similar in nature here to a, you know, to the pendulums, right? As your amplitude or the displacement of that pendulum changed, right? As that pendulum got further and further and further away, you increased that amplitude. The restoring force got larger. Same idea here. As that displacement, whether it's stretch or compress, increases, the amount of force it's going to take to bring that mass spring system back to equilibrium is going to increase as well. All right, so the way to practice with, with Hooke's law, right? So you press down on a spring with a force of 327 newtons. If the spring compresses 12.5 centimeters, what is the spring constant? So what is that K value? First thing you have to look at here is 12.5 centimeters converting to 0.125 meters because the Newton is based on the meter, not on the centimeter. So as we rearrange this to solve for K, right, we're going to get negative F over X. And now I want you to see one thing with what we did with the restoring force. right? We called that restoring force negative. Here's why. Based on that spring compression of 12.5 centimeters, you'll notice that I considered in this context compression to be positive, right? So I consider that 12.5 centimeters of compression to be positive X. The restoring force has to be in the opposite direction, which then tells us that that force has to be negative. So what's good here is we have a negative of a negative, which makes a positive. If you did not include the 327 as being a negative force, the K value would have come out to be negative 2,616 newtons per meter. And that would have been incorrect because spring constants are always positive values. All right, so that's what we would do here. Again, your force and your compression or stretch have to be opposite directions. You pick, right? You get to pick. You kind of have that freedom to do so here. Now, for, for the period, right, as we look at the mass spring system period here, same simulation going on the right-hand side as we're earlier in the notes, but now our formula changes ever so slightly for a mass spring system. We see that it is dependent on the mass that is hanging from the spring and the spring constant itself. So basically, how stiff the spring is is going to influence the period, and how large the mass is that's hanging is going to influence that period as well. So for a pendulum, the mass did not matter. For a mass spring system, the mass absolutely does, right? Because this is not, depending on orientation, a mass spring system does not have to be dependent on that gravitational pull, allowing this thing to move vertically, right? If we put it horizontally, right, set it on a table and, and stretch it horizontally across the table, 
Then we have frictional forces that are at play, but the mass of that spring or the mass hanging from that spring will still be significant. All right, so this is what we get. So as that spring constant increases, we're going to see that period change. As that mass increases, we're going to see that period change. All right, so just a couple things to keep in mind there. Now, a little practice on this one. Right, you have a simple spring system that holds a 0 0.32 kilogram mass. The spring has a resting length of 25 centimeters. You stretch the spring 5.33 centimeters from its resting position and release it. If the spring has a spring constant of 88 newtons per meter, what frequency will it vibrate at? So, way that you can break this down. Mass matters. On a, on a mass spring system. So at 0 0.32 kilograms, you will need that. The spring has a resting length of 25 centimeters, so that's going to be equilibrium will be 25 centimeters. When you stretch it, that 5.33 centimeters, that becomes your x value. right? That's, that is x. So we know the spring constant, what frequency. So we need to find the period of oscillation first, right? using the formula from the previous slide, 2 pi, times the square root of the mass divided by the stiffness of the spring. All right, so 0.32 kilograms over 88 newtons per meter. Take a square root of that times 2 pi to get your period. Then we can go ahead and take that period, set that equal to 1 over f, right? because period and frequency are inverses of each other. So the frequency is 2.64 hertz or 2.64 cycles per second right is how we can look at that so in this problem here we didn't necessarily need the length and the stretch however it's a good analysis to see on that right knowing that hey here's our resting length here's the stretch so we could go back to Hooke's law to figure out hey how much force how much restoring force was present as we acted here because we knew k is 88 we knew x was 5.33 centimeters right so we'd be able to find that restoring force in there Right? Here's another one. Right? Another one kind of combines this stuff here. So identical masses are hung from a simple pendulum and a spring system. Once activated, they have identical periods. The spring constant is known to be 122 newtons per meter, and the pendulum has a length of 0 0.222 meters. What is the mass used in both? Right? What is the mass used in both? Now, we have a pendulum and we have a spring system. Right, so we've got 2 pi times the square root of L over G, 2 pi times the square root of M over K. Remember, the mass does not matter for that pendulum. But they have identical periods. So the period of the pendulum equals the period of the spring. So we can set their expanded formulas equal to each other. The 2 pi's will drop out. So really, we see that L over G equals M over K, because to get rid of those square roots, right, we square each side. And that's what we're left with. So to solve for the mass, we're going to multiply that spring constant over. So we get the length of the pendulum times the spring constant divided by G. And we will find the mass on that spring. And technically the mass of the bob on the pendulum, not that it really matters because, again, the mass is independent on that simple pendulum. Right? That mass is independent. So really, we could say that they don't have identical masses. And this would give us the mass on that pendulum, and we'd be okay, right? Or this would give us the mass on the um, on the mass spring system, right? And we'd be good to go there. So both of these come down to 2 pi, right? Let's think about what that 2 pi means, right? 2 pi, that's going to help you get around a circle, right? Because if you, if you go around the circle, right, you get 2 pi as you go around that circumference. Well, if you track anything in harmonic motion, Right? It is going to oscillate up and down like the mass spring is to the left. And as it does so, we can track its motion. Right? And because that motion is repetitive, that repetition is equivalent to what we see going around the circle. Right? Just that, that's where we get the 2 pi from. Right? It's because that 2 pi is a continuous pattern. Right? We see that that period in the circle is equivalent to the period in harmonic motion. Right? So long as that vertical position stays constant. There are your mass spring systems, and there is the brunt of simple harmonic motion. Again, key things, 
is that your harmonic oscillators are going to go about the same pattern over and over and over. They will reach equal distances on both sides of the equilibrium position so long as we ignore our frictional and any external forces that may be acting. Right, and we see that pendulums are dependent on length and the acceleration due to gravity. Mass springs are dependent on the mass and the spring constant itself.